guys, Jay here, and welcome to my convention review for Komori Con 2019. And before I begin, just like always, in the top right-hand corner, there's going to be a card that'll take you to my con haul video, which will show you everything that I got signed and that I bought at the convention. But today, we're going to be just going over my review, what I thought of it, all that kind of stuff. So I don't do things like they got a grade A or grade B for uh, goodness of the convention or whatever, or one through five stars or whatever, stuff like that. I don't do that. Um, I give you all the information and then let you decide if you want to go or not. Honestly, I'm going to tell you right up front, this one was a lot better than last year. But that was because of a lot of different things. So let's start with the bad so that we can start with that and then go on with the good. So there were two main things that were bad that happened that I only experienced one of them and it's because that's what I go to conventions for. That's the autograph policy. Um, and then the other one um, I'll talk about in just a moment. It's I didn't experience it at all because I didn't have to go through it. Uh, it's just for people that were doing um, registration and pre-registration for the rest of the weekend. On Thursday there was nobody there so we just they like the line, we just had to zigzag through the line. Apparently they let you cut through and nobody said anything. So whatever, we didn't care. We weren't doing anything Thursday. We're not like trying to not be busy or so, you know, whatever, I don't know. So um, it didn't really matter. And we got our badges like that. Like we, there was literally nobody in front of us. There was people that were, you know, already there. And as soon as we got up, there was somebody that was open and we went straight to them. So nice and easy, didn't have to worry about anything. So I guess I will talk about that first. I don't know. It's just easy to get out of the way because I have no idea what it really was. Apparently half the staff didn't show up for registration. So it took way longer than it was supposed to. But we did go in there a couple different times to do a couple of different things that were in that section. And there was like not even half of the computers being used. They were all closed because people just didn't show up for their jobs. So that made it a lot harder for them to get registration done and there's nothing the con can do it's not the con's fault it's the volunteers fault for not showing up so whoever did that you know screw you you can never come back hopefully don't ever do that again uh whoever did that uh, but that's volunteer staff that does registration like that so yeah screw you um but uh the one that i had the problem with that they, they it was better I'll tell you this, the autograph thing was better than last year. It still sucked. Uh, so there are good parts, but there are bad parts. So I made a post and I ended up deleting it because they just didn't give a crap. And they were probably going to delete it soon anyway. Because honestly, any negative criticism they do delete. So that's not good. But whatever. Uh, so I did ask about um, the autographs. Three of the most popular people that were there were all at the same time on Sunday, which was really weird. Why would you put three people that most people are going to want to get at the exact same time? Uh, that's not good. Um, so that really sucks. They also uh, did this thing where if you got two autographs of, that were like really close to each other, where their times overlapped a little bit, like even if it was just like a, a half hour overlap and you could totally make it to the other one, they wouldn't let you. You had to pick one or the other. So that sucked um but it, it they i guess they changed it on sunday uh people were complaining enough probably that they changed it so i'm not 100 percent, but i'll get into that story uh in just a moment here but when i posted and asked if they were going to be at the same table if they were going to be separate how we we're going to do all that um and then they replied with their little policy thing like komori Khan's page replied and posted the policy i didn't even know they had the policy uh, it's on their website it's easy to find but i just type in komori Khan autographs on Google and it's the first page that shows up and it's the policies and tells you how to do everything. Last year what they did was you would line up for a raffle and you would draw basically out of a hat or out of a bucket or whatever and if you got a pass you got a pass. If you didn't it would say you are not a winner and you'd go. You would waste like two hours of your time uh, standing in line just to say oh you didn't win. That's horrible. Um, people did complain about that. I think they misunderstood what people were complaining about though. People weren't complaining about the distribution. The problem was that you needed a pass in the first place to go get an autograph. So instead of taking that out completely, they just changed the distribution process, which was stupid. It was better, but it was still stupid. And it's a horrible idea. People were still complaining. Nobody likes it and uh, whatever. But uh, so what they did this year is they changed it so that there's kiosks. There's like eight or nine whatever um, computers and they're like a monitor and then a keyboard and mouse. Uh, like on a big kiosk stand, kind of like how you'd play games at Walmart on their little stands or something, like their little display stands. Uh, it's like that, but a keyboard and mouse. But um, it was on their site, on that page. It was just stuck on that page where you could just do your application to get 
uh, autographs, and then that's it. So um, what it was is that you would go uh, put your name, your, uh, your, your phone number if you wanted to. You don't have to put your phone number, but you have to put an email address, and then they'll either email you or do email and phone. Uh, so if you put your phone number, they would do both. If you didn't put a phone number, it would just do your email. But service was horrible there, so nobody wanted to do email, so they all got text like I did. Um, so it would text you like an hour and a half to two hours before and tell you if you won or not. And the better thing was that you could pick all of them. You could just click every single one and then just see if you win them. Which, that's a really bad way to do it if you're not going to see other people. Somebody can just clog that up to make it so... Like if there was somebody who wanted to be a jerk. Yeah, I'm not saying it happened. It probably didn't. But um, it's still, you could have just clicked all of them and just had a bunch of people click all of them. And then those people just never show up to their winning. They were giving them out first come first serve after they've given out the people who have already won and it's like right beforehand. So in like the cutoff line to you can't get a ticket anymore because you, you just came too late. You know, like 10 minutes before or something to just pass them out to the people who were waiting in line. And who, who thought, hey, if nobody handed them out, can I have one? You know, that kind of thing. Um, and then they would be like at the end of the line, basically, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, it was a little bit better, like I said, but still not the best. I really hope they just go back to normal. It makes it so much easier. But at least this way, we knew whether or not for sure we were getting an autograph. We were guaranteed an autograph if we got a, if we got, uh, a ticket. So there, there were two types of passes, though. There was a pass and a wait list pass. So the wait list was like group B from last year, where once group A goes, then people from group B will funnel in and until the end of the thing. And if they go fast enough, everybody can get one. So just, you know, be fast and let everybody get one. So it's better this way, but it's also better if you do it the right way. The way, like SoccerCon doesn't have this problem. They don't have to implement this. I think what it was is that KomoriCon is now in big boy territory in a convention center. So they think they can run it like a big boy convention, like Anime Expo. They think they're like that big now and you're not even close. You're not even at SoccerCon's level yet. You're still half of SoccerCon. Uh, they got, I think, 10,850 people, roughly. And, uh, well, it's like 10,800 something. I believe that's what it was. And SoccerCon gets upwards of like 25,000. So, yeah, they're not even halfway there yet. And they, SoccerCon's twice as big. They don't have to do it. So, I don't know. Anyway, that's it for the bad parts, though. Um, staff was really nice. Convention staff was helpful. Uh, they even did their best to try to figure out where things were when we were confused. We actually had to look for um, where a photo shoot was for that time I got reincarnated as a slime since we were cosplaying from that. And um, they showed us where we thought it was. So, I mean, that's our fault for not knowing where it was. Apparently, there's um, two types of ballrooms. There's the ones that were by the entrance, and then there's ones way on the other side of the convention center. So... Uh, those people decided, since there was more of us on the side we were on, and they knew where we are, but we don't know where they were exactly, they just came over to us. We all had a good time. It was fine. Uh, we were very popular, actually. Me and Atlas and our group stuff. Yeah. So the slime stuff was extremely popular. Like, we were, everybody loved that. Because of our big group, everybody was just like, yeah, yeah, we need this photo. Um, best con ever for me actually because of the slime group um i have never had this nothing's going to top friday let me just tell you that um day one of con there's nothing that's going to top this unless it happens with the same voice actor and it just more happens that's the only way it's gonna top it at all uh so what happened i'll just say it here because uh why not uh so on friday uh, i won a britney karbowski autograph so i was like well yeah that's my favorite voice actress ever so and i'm cosplaying one of her characters and that's the whole reason i chose rimaru in the first place i was like i have to see her and i have to go with rimaru so hardy and i were the ones who won them and no one else did so that kind of sucked but um so we got in the line anyway um they let him go out and back in line to go get some anime and i did get the slime anime and i got that signed and artwork signed and all that kind of stuff um but she wanted a picture of us we paid for a picture of her too to, to get a picture together but um so uh hardy me and Brittany karbowski were all you know in a picture but she wanted a picture with us on her phone and it's freaking surreal to know that i have a there's a picture of me on my favorite voice actress's phone that's insane if she ever tweets out the picture i don't know if she's going to or not but if she does I will link to that or I'll post like a thing up here somewhere showing it, but I did one too and whatever. But that was great already as it was. 
but we had uh, a big group. We met up with our Shion cosplayer, uh, and um, we met back up with Atlas and Carissa, and we were all in a big group. We walked up the stairs from where they were, and then we were by the entrance again, and we ran into a fursuit Ranga, which is awesome because I was hoping to run into, into them. I knew they were going, um, and then they were with the Shion as well. And we started getting these big group pictures. Everybody was coming up wanting to get pictures and stuff because it's a giant group of people. And then Brittany Karbowski walks by, just looks and starts taking pictures. And we're like, okay, this is weird, okay. But I was like, hey, Brittany, come on, get in the pictures, get in the pictures. And so she runs over and gets in the pictures with us. So I really hope I can find those because if I do, I'll post those as well but like here somewhere before I edit it. I'll hopefully edit this afterwards so I can, like after a week or so, so I can see if there's gonna be pictures or not, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, so that made my con experience just like the best thing ever. And then uh, they have this cosplay bingo thing, which on the back of the schedule, I don't know if you guys can see this from here, but whatever, there's a bunch of, there's like a grid here. Uh, Sora is on there, so on Saturday, I got like hundreds of pictures. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was not hundreds, but I'm just exaggerating. But I got a ton of pictures and we couldn't move from one spot for like an hour. So that was really fun. But other than that, there's really nothing to talk about for like reviewing it because uh, I don't know if lines were bad or not. Anything that I wanted to do, there wasn't lines for. Um, I wasn't going to panels or anything, but Atlas and his friends didn't have any line problems. Nothing was wrong there. I think I heard something about some of the lines were bad and some things were late or something, but I didn't even see that. I don't know where people were seeing it from, but I didn't see it at all, so I can't say on it. So that's just a thing that just happens when volunteers don't show up, and I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, and then they just got the rest of the convention center back, because uh, 2016 and 17, they had the full like side of the convention center that we've been using. And then 2018, they were doing construction. So we got like only a ha like half of that. So we got like a quarter of the convention center, which sucked. But now we got it all back. There's a whole bunch of new stuff now. There's like two food stands and the restaurants are gone and the gaming's moved and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's a crazy mess. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So it's possible that something's gonna make something else late. And then that just domino effects from there. Nothing people can do about it, but I don't know, other than that, I had a great time. I mean, I was, I had fun. I can't really speak on the people who didn't because I'm not them and I didn't have their experience. But if you did have a bad experience and you want to talk about it, go ahead and leave some stuff below in the comment section. Uh, I would like to see what other stuff happened because I didn't see any of it. So, like I said, I can't speak on things I didn't see. So, uh, be sure to voice your opinions below of what happened with you, uh, your experience, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later.